Hello, everybody. So today I'm going to talk about BC Summer, uh, which is an abandoned nuclear power project. Uh, but it looks like it might actually get revived. So what's in the news? Uh, we see that South, South Carolina lawmakers are discussing the possibility of finishing the two abandoned VC Summer AP1000 construction projects. And the interesting bit about this is that it, 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 it is basically being spoken about by both parties. So both Democrats and Republicans are uh, talking about this in a positive light. Uh, excuse the cat jumping down um so the news is, is is pretty interesting um i will make sure that the link to all of this news is in the description down below again uh this one is particularly interesting uh so over here you see a picture this is of one of the units that was under construction in south carolina what you see is it, they basically dropped the work they dropped everything out of their hands and they and they went away uh, this project really was abandoned. So let's see what we can learn. The interesting bit is that there's a lot of equipment sitting around there. I, I believe that they are also selling some equipment off to other projects. Over here you can see uh, the reactor pressure vessel uh, parked somewhere. Uh, this, this picture was actually taken on September 12, 2024. So it, it turns out that a lot of the uh, a lot of the equipment is still there, but obviously finishing this project is going to be a massive task, regardless of whether everything is there or not. So why is this news relevant? Why is what? Why do I make a big deal of it out of it? But why should the U.S. also make a big deal of, out of it? And that's because they have an ambition to triple their nuclear capacity by 2050. Uh, this is something that they promised at COP28, which is uh, 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 basically a climate conference uh, where all these countries come together and they basically, um, you know, they, they, they make uh, promises and they agree to do uh, certain things in order to make sure that climate change doesn't get out of hand. So today's capacity, today's nuclear capacity is uh, roughly 100 gigawatts and the 2050 target, uh, given the ambition, is th roughly 300 gigawatts. And the interesting thing about VC Summer is that, you know, it is, it is half built and can be completed relatively easy. I mean, uh, I'm not going to say that it is easy, uh, but comparing it to something that you know where nothing has been done where you don't even have some of the paperwork done uh, this probably is more easy than that but you know if you have a combined license to build these things then obviously that is easier than this now um here you can see uh something about the tripling pledge uh the u.s wants to triple nuclear power by 2050 this was from uh friday september uh, 27th, 2024. So this is also recent uh, news. And, and what you can see here is that they also want to uh, start converting coal-fired power plants into uh, nuclear power plants. But the AP1000 is not suitable to that end. Uh, the interesting th thing about uh, so what you see here, obviously, this is a this is a map with all the nuclear power plants in the United States. Over here, you have South Carolina. Here's Georgia. I have to look. I believe that this is this. That's Hatch. That's Vogel. Uh, so over here, this is the site where the first two AP1000s in the United States have been completed. As you can see, there's. I believe that this is Unit 3 and this is Unit 4. Over here, you have Units 1 and 2. Those are older reactors, but these are the AP1000s. That is the type of reactor that we're talking about. And when you look, uh, when we go to the north, then you see here uh, we have the VC summer power station. Over here you have a single reactor that is still operational today. And then over here you can see the two projects that have basically have been the abandoned. And what you can see is a part of the uh, part of the the containment structure was being built over here. You can see the same uh, these little. Uh, these little, well, they're not little actually. These rooms are the are the places where they they would install 
the the steam generators which is what you need to eventually run steam through the turbines that would have been installed here so over this this is what we call the nuclear island and over this this is what we would call the generator building and you can see there's loads and loads of uh i mean there's there's equipment here there's materials uh over here i believe that these are uh the domes that they would install to basically close the uh, the containment buildings off so a lot of work has been done and, and they basically dropped everything that they had and, and they just said okay we're not going to finish this plant which is a real shame so what happened at vc summer uh 2017 that was the moment when they basically said we are going to stop building this plant we we know that we are already in too deep I believe that at that moment they uh, poured uh, roughly 11 billion US dollars into this project and they said this is going to cost too much uh, and eventually uh, uh, so, uh, an executive even went to jail for 15 months because he lied about you know the financial statements and, 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 and he lied about you know the state of the plan. Subsequently what happened was that uh, Westinghouse uh, they, they had to file for bankruptcy and Toshiba, Toshiba was uh, Westinghouse's owner. They also uh, went through a financial crisis. So this basically meant that VC Summer was, uh, the, the project was shut down. Uh, Vogel was in a terrible place at the same, at that same moment as well, because obviously Westinghouse is, is, is the vendor that is selling that plant and making sure that it, it, it can get built. Uh, but eventually, finally, uh, Vogel did get completed and I do think that it was worth the money because uh, as you can see uh, point number three um, you know it affected 5,000 jobs in uh, in South Carolina and uh, it, it raised really serious doubt doubts whether Vogel 3 and 4 uh, could be uh, finished so let's take a look at the AP 1000 uh, let's see uh, what we can learn from the EP1000. Uh, I, I, personally, I, I think it's it's a pretty neat pressurized water design, a pressurized water reactor design. Um, so what they said, what they were saying about it is that they, you know, they they, they made sure that the footprint, that the overall uh, plant layout, that it is as compact as possible. This can also lead to some problems, obviously. Uh, but usually when you do that, this means that you need less materials uh, for a, you know, it, it, it is a, it is a well-optimized plant in terms of materials for print and the, the, the amount of space that, that you need. Uh, they say, okay, we had a reduction in components and construction material, a reduction in work hours needed to build the plant, and they said that there's uh, modular construction uh, possible in this design. It also uh, has a passive sa passive safety systems. Uh, it has passive safety systems uh, in order to you know ensure that when the power falls out and, and there's an emergency, that the reactor can at least cool itself for I believe it is it is 72 hours. Here you see a schematic cut through from the reactor building. Down here, uh, this 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 tiny red square. That's that's probably uh, the fuel that is uh, installed. Uh, this is the reactor core. Around it, you have the reactor pressure vessel. Then you have the two. Then you have one uh, steam uh, generator over here. There's probably two of them in 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 one system. Over here, you have the pressurizer. And what they've done is they basically have created a a sort of condenser. Uh, system uh, that that basically you know when when something something would go wrong with the power and there is no pumping uh, pumping uh, uh, possible anymore. This is where you get this this internal uh, natural convection natural circulation pattern that that ensures that the reactor can stay cool for a while. Uh, I mean it's 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 really sad that that Westinghouse. Uh, went bankrupt over this reactor design, especially over the VC Summer and Vogel projects, because I do think that it is a an, an elegant design and it is a nice 
a nice beefy pressurized water reactor that we should be using uh, and should be building a lot, a lot more of. So here you see a, a couple of key uh, takeaways. You know, uh, this 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 nuclear power plant can be used uh, to produce uh, water, drinkable water, desalinated water. Uh, it can be used, you know, uh, it, 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 to to store electricity or store energy. The issue is that because the, the the fuel is loaded into the reactor when you shut it down, you basically that's basically stored energy right there. Uh, you know, when once you make sure that there's that there's no uh, criticality left, and, and and the reactor is in cold cold shutdown, uh, starting it up is basically freeing uh, stored energy. Uh, well, electricity production speaks for itself. Speaks for itself. They also say that they can do hydrogen production, but practically any reactor can do all of these things. And district heating, uh, which is something that is already being uh, employed in Switzerland. Now, the EPU 1000 in, in terms of numbers, uh, two units have been finished and are operational in the US. Uh, Vogel, units, Vogel units three and four. Then there are two units that were abandoned. These are the units that we are talking about today, VC Summer 2 and 3. Six more combined licenses are issued in the US, and a combined license means that you have permission to construct and operate the nuclear power plant. There are four finished AP-1000s in China. There are three AP-1000s planned in Poland, and I believe that the civil works have already started for these nuclear power plants, and four units are planned in Ukraine. So this brings the total up to 20. So over here you can see Turkey Point Unit 6 and 7. Those were supposed to be AP-1000, the coal or the combined, combined operations license has been issued. The same for a levy nuclear Levy nuclear plant units one and two, AP 1000s. Again, the status is issued. Vogel units three and four, these have been completed. Virgil C, summer units two and three, the units that we're talking about today. And then you have William States Lee the third, units one and two. Uh, those combined uh, licenses have been issued as well. And then there's a couple of issued licenses for uh, economically simplified boiling water reactors from Unit 3. Then over here, North Anna Unit 3. There's still an advanced boiling water reactor over here. And then Sheoran Harris Units 2 and 3, AP-1000, unfortunately. Uh, those, though, I, I don't know, I believe that those were issued, but eventually suspended. But it also can be that they were never uh, actually issued, but suspended. In any case, as you can see, what this page represents to me is that a lot of work has been put into uh, issuing these licenses, uh, making sure that you can, that you prove that you can actually construct a power plant and actually operate a nuclear power plant, because that's what this represents. And this is basically, you know, once 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 the stamp issued is there, you basically have been given the green light to go ahead to start. Uh, constructing the reactor and there's still six uh six issued licenses over here or or basically there are licenses for six uh new ap1000 reactors including virtual sea summer units two and three uh which i believe that uh would be a tremendous ch shame if we didn't actually um completed these reactors so this brings us to you know, the point that I've been trying to make in all the videos that I've been making in the recent times is that we are living in the watershed for new nuclear energy at this moment. And if you don't believe me, I mean, just look at everything that the United States is doing at this moment. So this is uh, this is them announcing in December 1st, 1st 2023, uh, that they together with a lot of other com countries have pledged that they want to triple nuclear capacity by 2050. Over here you can see uh, five ways the, U the U.S. nuclear energy industry is evolving in 2024. You can clearly see here how so they think that they can triple nuclear capacity. Uh, they're clearly talking about, you know, what lessons were learned from, for instance, building the AP-1000, how that they can actually 
uh, reduce uh, time needed to construct these plants and to, you know, in essence also, this also means that if you can do it in less time, they can do it for cheaper because time really is a big factor in uh, the construction cost of new nuclear power reactors. Um, over here, the Biden-Harris administration takes action to secure nuclear fuel supply chain to equip revitalized domestic nuclear industry for the future, April 19th, 2024. If we go further, U.S. Department of Energy surpasses $1 billion in support to U.S. college and universities to advance nuclear science and technology. And then finally, you know, uh, I don't know what this means, FY spending uh, bill FY 2024 spending bill fuels historic push for U.S. advanced reactors. This is about HALU, you know, because uh, some of these new uh, small modular reactors, demonstration reactors, they need a higher uh, enrichment for their uh, uranium, just like uh, Kairos Power and X Energy that we have been talking about recently. And finally here, the Department of Energy launches a 100 million nuclear safety training and workforce development program. Again, September 30th, 2024. So currently, simply just, just considering what the United States has been communicating in the recent times, I mean, that says it all, basically. Um, they're investing a lot of money in training new people, in making sure the projects get actually built. And this brings us back to uh, to this uh, news, the news that is coming from South Carolina, uh, where this plant has been basically wasting away uh, because, because, you know, for... I mean, you can, you can argue whether this, this was a dumb decision or not. What I would say is it wasn't the smartest decision that they took or... It wasn't as prudent as they might have think that it was, because if they had actually gone through with the project and finished it like they did with Vogel 3 and 4, that would have meant that, you know, a lot of jobs would have been uh, still there. Uh, now they're getting these jobs back if they eventually go through with trying to uh, build this, uh, actually complete these two reactors. Um and it's going to be a boon for the entire region over there. Uh, so, so I, I mean, I, I simply hope that they that they act, that, that they actually continue. Uh, the fact that they are looking at whether they uh, should do it, uh, whether they can do it, uh, I think that that is a positive sign. And let's take that for what it is. So. Uh, You've reached the end of this video. Thank you all very much for watching. Uh, I want to thank uh, some people who are supporters of me at Patreon. Uh, Meredith Angren, Riputama Malotra, Peter Rummer, Stefan Nikolov, Steve, Timothy Maloney, Alan Metzger, and Gordon McDowell. Um, I mean, there's loads, loads of other people, as you can see. I want to give everybody a shout out who has, uh, who has, uh, you know, who has pledged some, uh, some, some financial support for the channel. In any case, I wish you all a nice weekend. Thank you all for watching, and may the strong force be with you. Bye bye.